Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today the kids from Screen Time are going to have a special message to share. So here's the stamp set Screen Time and Bannertastic, and Offset Sayings Christmas. Here's the coordinating dies to Screen Time, and the Just Stitching Hearts, the Heart Shaker gift tag, and the Ballet Slippers cardstock, Guava cardstock, and a little heart and guava, but also I'll do one in mermaid as well. So I'm going to start by stamping out the kids. And I'm using Crunchy Leaf, which is Copic friendly. And I'm going to stamp it out first on printer paper. And then I will stamp it a second time on my paper, my cardstock, so that I can do some no line coloring. And I have a nice light impression that I can just barely see but when I color over it, you won't see it at all. But now I wanna put their faces back in. So I am inking up the kids once again and just taking the ink off from around their faces and then stamp their little faces on there. And they're all set to go. So we're gonna start coloring and I'm gonna start with the skin. And I'm just finding my shadows here with an E triple zero. But when I do no line coloring, I'll come in and do the lightest things like the skin, but then I'll come back and I will touch up that skin later. So it helps to have everything colored to get those final details and shading on, on the skin. So this is just a start. So once I found those shadows, now I'm coming in with the next darkest and I'm going to just keep layering up uh, different shades for the skin. I love coloring the Lawn Fawn Critters, but I also love these kids. Um, well, you don't even have to use them as kids. They can be people, older people, any age. But in this case, we're uh, creating little kids because I'm, they fit so nicely in the heart shaker gift tags and this will be a card for oh it could be for a grandma or a mom but these two kids are going to say love from both of us and what's fun about this is that you can mix it up to be your own kids or you and your siblings and you can have two girls two boys eight girls and boys, <laughs> whatever you had for siblings or children. Anyway, uh, we're just going to finish up her skin. Skin is, for me, a challenge, and so I keep working at it. I keep practicing. Um, I love to see what people use for skin tones. There are so many different ways to do skin out there, and there's so many different colors of skin. So it's it's fun, but it's also a challenge. So I'm using lighter colors here just because uh, this is me and my brother, and we are both pasty white people. So <laughs> that's why we have light skin here. Anyway, I am really just gonna focus on the girl today because if I showed you the girl and boy, we would be here forever. So the way I'm doing her hair is I'm finding the, uh, the lines that are stamped and following those but also trying to figure out which way that hair would flow so I found a part there and I'm gonna make sure that there is um, dark areas around the back of her hair like where you would see her shoulders and her face and so I'm just mapping that out with my lightest color and I'm gonna come in with the next darker one and pull those dark shadows out and come in with those same wispy kind of uh, lines going from her part and well gosh she looks like she's having feathered hair so <laughs> this is this this is Farrah Fawcett all right so uh, I'm just gonna keep wisping her hair out she's got quite the waves going I envy her she's got nice thick hair here and uh, I keep finding those same lines and defining them a little more. 
and going to a darker color, deciding how dark I want to go by just moving up the line of um, darkness with my markers. And then I can kind of decide uh, how dark those lines are going to be. And when you're seeing a person, you don't see each single strand of hair on them. So I'm not making strands of hair, I'm making just uh, sections of hair, but she's so small that my wispy lines are actually looking more like sections of hair instead of little strands. All right, this is the darkest uh, E37 and her hair seems to be taking shape. I haven't colored all her hair yet because I'm going to take all those lines that are creating her hair and with the lighter colors I'll blend, I'll still keep flicking over those, over the darker lines so that it blends it all in together and that way it'll look like all one instead of little parts. So I did that with my medium tone, and now I'm going to do that again with the lightest tone. I used all one color family, the E30s, so now I'm coming in with some E20s to give her a few highlights, because just like the hairstylist, uh, we've got to put a little interest in her hair. So blending that back in with the original light color, the E31. And she's all set for hair. And we're going to start on the shirt. So this is a RV32. And I colored the whole shirt first because, you know, when it's so light, sometimes you, you lose it. So I wanted to make sure I could see the entire shirt before I came in and, and did shadows. So now here come the shadows in the RV34. And I'm finding those under her arms and down by her lap. And then I'll blend that back into the shirt with the RV32. Now my darkest color is an R56. And I'm just touching into those uh, darkest parts of the shadows. So under the arms by her neck where you would see her hair. And to kind of show that... Uh, collar a little bit better on the shirt and then I'll blend that in with the R34 and once that's all blended I blend in the R32. I did her jeans the same way so I came in and just colored them up so that I knew where my lines were and then I'm coming in now to put in some of the shadows so where her legs cross and on the knees and underneath and just darkening those up. And then she's going to have some cute brown leather boots under those jeans. And so I'm putting those in and just finding those lines. And then I'll shade them just one shade darker and then blend that in. And now that she's all done, I can come back in and add to her skin. So trying to define her neck a little better and where that hair is casting a shadow. And now just adding a little bit of more depth to her shirt. And these are just little touches. You know, I don't want to really do too much more here. Just defining these areas because they don't have dark lines to define those. I finished coloring the boy the same way and now I'm taking the coordinating dies and with some post-it note tape I'm going to tack those down and run them through the die cutting machine and they'll be all set to place in the hearts. There they are and here's, here's I'm going to do a little surgery so I'm cutting around their little hands so that they can each hold a heart. And I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and slowly cutting those out. And then I'm going to add the heart right in there in their little hands. 
and you could do this several ways. You could color extra hands and just cut those out and place them over their, the heart once it's in place. Or you could leave that alone, just put a heart there and everybody will know that they're holding it. But this is just kind of a fun little detail. I'm going to add a little skin color back around where the hands were cut. And now it's time to put our hearts together. So I'm using my glue tube and I'm just going around the frame of the heart. And I love these heart shaker gift tags because you can make shakers out of them. And I did that, I'll show you at the end, um, a couple of different suggestions or ideas for the same uh, design that I'm doing. And I'm putting a little phone tape behind the kids and slipping them into the hearts. And I love how their legs are crossed in a way that it just looks so great at the bottom of that heart. All right, well, they need a background. And I'm using some Distress Oxide ink. And this is Worn Lipstick. And it just, it's like the perfect color for that guava cardstock. So I'm starting out by just ink blending with a life-changing blender brush and blending some into the background and then I just smushed that ink right on my glass mat and with a little water and a brush I'm spattering it around but it's not enough so I wanted to just goop that all in <laughs> into the I want to make it look messy I don't want a real perfect looking background so I smushed it into the ink and then I'm using some gold watercolor from the Gansai Tambi set that I have. And with a little water, I'm just flicking on flecks of gold. And now I'm taking a couple of drops of liquid stardust and putting that down. And with my paintbrush again and a little water, I'm flicking on some flecks of stardust, which makes it very sparkly, as you can see. It's very shiny. And I decided that eh, I'm going to do some more smushing. So I didn't want to give up any of that liquid stardust. So I smushed my paper again into that. And like I said, I don't want this to look perfect, and and it doesn't. So I cut it down to a four by five and a quarter inch panel and I used a guava four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel underneath it. And then I wanted to give it a little bit more of a look of, I wanted to center it a little bit better. And that's what these double stitched hearts are, are great for. And so I figured out where I wanted that and I ran it through my die cut machine and so now it kind of gives a focal to the center of my panel. And that's especially nice when you have these two separate hearts. All right, well, I am ready to start the sentiment and so I'm using clear ink and I'm stamping up this long banner from Bannertastic and I'm using some gold embossing powder and I'm just sprinkling that on and I'll take it off camera and heat that up with my heat tool to melt it and now it's time for the sentiment and I'm using the offset sayings Christmas it has some great little words that link up beautifully and so I'm placing them sort of where I want them on the banner and then picking them up on the door of my Misty and that way I can move them around, kind of curve them so that they're just in the same shape as the banner. Ink that up with some clear ink and sprinkle some gold embossing powder on that. And then I'll again heat that up with my heat tool to melt it. And now I'm going to cut out that banner and I'm going to fussy cut it because I want it to kind of match the look of the hearts. And so I don't want a white border around that one. Although now that I look at it, I think, well, I could have used the coordinating die with that. It would have looked good too. So now it's time to put it all together. And we've got the little girl and the little boy. And 
I'm going to put a little bit of shading on this banner just so that it looks like it's a little more dimensional. I used a C0 and blended that out with a C00. I'm going to slip a little gold twine in the hole of the tags and I'm not going to adhere them yet because I want to adhere everything down first and then I will flip over the panel and adhere it to the back. The banners adhered down but not uh, strongly yet because I want to lift it up and make sure I could get that twine behind it because that's going to go directly up. So now I can put some adhesive on the little boy heart tag and adhere that down and pull that twine up so that it's straight. Make sure that banner is now tightly down and then put a little adhesive on the girl heart tag and put her sort of underneath or tuck, tuck her heart underneath the banner a little bit. And then pull up her twine. And then here's how I'm adhering it on the back. I just pull it so that it's straight and where I want it. And then put a little double-sided tape on the twine in the back. And I'm going to do it twice just, just in case. I just feel better if it's <laughs> if it's got two on there. I don't know why. I You probably don't need to do that, but I put on two pieces. And so same with the little girl with her twine. Just make sure it's straight where I want it and then put on those two pieces of double-sided tape and it's not going anywhere. So now I can uh, put some adhesive on the back of that panel and I'll also uh, take off those pieces of, of release paper and clip off the rest of that twine and put it down on my panel. Now I can adhere the whole thing onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I made a similar design using them as shaker hearts. You can see, and that has the pearlescent vellum on it. So it's a little fancy. That could be a Valentine or a wedding card. And then on the right, you can see changing it up with a frame, framing it out and maybe changing the colors. So there's so many ways you could use the same design. I hope you enjoyed some no line coloring today and getting inky with a smushed and spattered background. Have a great day. Bye.